Hello, hello, family. Tammy Lynn here with a very encouraging and comforting word from the Lord for my sisters in Christ, for his daughters, for those of you who are mothers and you have been praying for a child or your children, whether they are young or old, who have strayed away. They have strayed away from you and they have strayed away from God. They have denied his name. They have denied his presence in their lives. They have denied his ways. They've been living outside of the will of God. It is the will of God that they be reconciled back to him. It is the will of God that they accept him and make him the Lord their God and the Lord over every area of their lives. It is also the will of God that they honor you. And the Lord says to you today, where there has been dishonor, he is restoring honor. Glory, hallelujah. Family, I absolutely love this word from the Lord. I was just in his word this morning, and I knew later I was going to release some other messages, but I was drawn to Jeremiah 31, and as I was reading it, and I got to verse 15, just immediately just felt the Holy Spirit begin to take this in a direction in which he wanted it to go to release a word, a promise that he is making over mothers today. For some of you, this will be a confirming word. For others, it will be the first time perhaps that you've heard this promise from the Lord. But he's wanting to decree this promise. When uh, God decrees a thing, he also establishes a thing. Job twenty two twenty eight. when we decree a thing, he establishes that thing. Glory, hallelujah. And he wanted to uh, give you hope. So please open up your ears. Please get the word of God. Deep is calling unto deep. We're going to go take a look at his word and allow the Holy Spirit just to minister to you, Mama, and to encourage you as he reminds you of his faithfulness and his promises for you. And he who promises is faithful to fulfill those promises. Glory. Hallelujah. Uh, before I go any further in this message, let me give a few reminders. One is... There is a membership called Shiro's of Faith. It is for uh, my sisters in Christ only. You can find that over underneath the membership tab on the YouTube channel. I do a live on the first Sunday of each month. So we're coming up on another live at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. I would be absolutely honored uh, to have you join us. Also, it is October and it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So if you have not had your mammogram, please go get your mammogram. Even if you feel great, even if they feel great, go get the mammogram. Mammogram can detect things that our eyes can't see and our hands can't even uh, feel. Uh, uh, mammograms can save lives. Some of you are aware of my own journey uh, that started actually in October of last year when I discovered uh, the lump in my left uh, breast. Um, at that time had a few things going on one I didn't have insurance and I knew I knew that it, it was cancer um, but sometimes we could go into denial and one thing I'm really good at is taking care of taking care of everybody else but not taking care of myself and so in October I was doing really good at taking care of everybody else but not taking care of myself and then in December, the Lord clearly spoke to me and said, you need to go to the doctor. It needs to come out. The enemy's trying to use this to take you out. Um, but I'm walking with you. I have you covered, and I'm going to heal you. And so I've shared that on some of the other uh, videos just pertaining to breast cancer. But I want to use this opportunity to promote uh, awareness, to bring awareness, and to encourage you to go get a mammogram. Uh, my hope is if a woman will go get a mammogram, even if she doesn't see or feel anything, but if something was there, that she would be able to find it, they would find it, and certainly prevent her from going, having to endure the path that I've had to take and that I am still taking. Um, so please go get the mammogram. If you don't have insurance or financial means, please look out in your community. Somewhere out there, I just know there's a way because he who is faithful is always faithful to make a way. C 
seek and ye shall find. So please reach out to community resources. Ask other sisters in Christ. And if you can't find it on your own and you don't have another sister in Christ that can help you, then please send me an email. Let me know where you live and I will get on it and I will try to find something myself to get you in to get that mammogram, not out of fear. You know, we don't do a mammogram out of fear of cancer. It's just self-care and we need to love ourselves enough to take care of ourselves and to give ourselves uh, self-care. And so, yes, please go get um, your mammogram. Okay, so we're going to take a look at Jeremiah 31, 15. This is where the Holy Spirit uh, stopped me this morning and uh, began to minister this message. This message that actually a year ago, October 2023, he began to speak. And in December, he spoke more on it, and I had planned on, and I've done a, a few releases talking about the oppression of uh, his people, oppression of his daughters, uh, but not to the extent of really what had been in my heart uh, to share. But I know the time has come. We have a lot of mamas out there that um, are separated from their children because of the works of the enemy. The Lord says, you know, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. We wrestle with principalities. So don't take it personal. The Lord does not want you to take it personal. It's very easy for us to take it personal when our children um, dislike us, judge us, dishonor us. But the Lord says, do not take it personal. It's a principality. And he had showed me that for many, there was a pattern in bloodlines. So some of you can actually take a look in your bloodline and see a pattern where there was separations between mothers and her children. And the Lord even says in his word that a sign of the end times is when we begin to see daughters against mothers, mothers against daughters, sons against fathers, fathers against sons, and we're seeing it. I've been seeing it for years. I was thinking this morning as he was ministering to me, trying to look back at how long have I actually been seeing it? I was seeing it in my childhood. I was seeing it with my own mother. I was seeing the separation between my mother and her own children. Her own children who had strayed away from her and strayed away from the Lord. So this, for me, is a generational thing. But he says he is reversing reversing every generational curse in our lives. Glory, hallelujah. Then I also thought back to a time uh, when I was, when I really began to do ministry and the women that I was seeing, the connections that um, I was making with women then who were having issues with their children, particularly their adult children. So I've been seeing this for quite some time, but over the last couple years, I have been seeing an increase of it. And I do believe we are closer than ever for truly the King of glory to come get us. Glory, hallelujah. And he's been saying, there's so much for me to release. He's been saying, prepare the way. Uh, but I don't want to get off of, of the subject. So I've been seeing it, but I've been seeing an increase. And this is on the heart of the Father. Because it has grieved his daughters. It has brought oppression in the lives of his daughters. And he is settling this in this hour. He's dealing with the oppressor in this hour. So he says to you, do not take it personal. And again, some of you will be able to look in your bloodline and see patterns where there has been separations. If perhaps that was you and you had a strained relationship with uh, your mother, um, y'all weren't close for whatever reasons, then I just encourage you to seek reconciliation with that. I encourage you to forgive her. I've, I've spoken to so many women and even uh, much older women who still carry the pain from uh, the relationship that they had with their mother. And the one thing that the Lord has been showing me as he's been uh, speaking in regards to how the enemy has been working because the enemy gets in people's ears. The first ear he got into was Eve in the garden, a daughter of God. So he gets into the ears of daughters. 
He gets into the ears of our daughters, of our sons. And he lies and he deceives. And just like Eve, when she pondered that lie from the enemy one too many times, it became her reality. And she acted on it. So the Lord has been showing me, and it's been going on for, for a long, long, long time. He's been showing me how this turning away between daughters and mothers and mothers and daughters, it is because the enemy has been in the ear. And particularly in the ears of the daughters. Because the enemy tells them things like, your mama did this, or remember your mama said that, and just these things. And maybe some of them are true. You know, no mother is perfect, and, and mothers just, mothers mess up. I was um, sitting with a friend earlier this week as she was going through her chemo treatment. And she was sharing with me the situation between um, her and her adult daughter. And, it, of course, it was just a lot of confirmation to me of what the Lord has been showing me. I asked him years ago to break my heart for what breaks his. And let's just say he's been slowly, gently breaking my heart for what breaks his. And it hurts. And my heart hurt. Um, it grieved as I listened to this mother, this woman who was going through chemo treatment. And the fact that her uh, grown daughter um, had not been around for her. Um, it's something actually that's become a personal story of mine that I myself am birthing. So this word is it's for y'all, but the Lord has also given this to me. Glory, hallelujah. Um, but she had shared with me some things that had occurred with her adult daughter. And she had shared with me something that at one time she had said to her adult daughter. And I knew immediately that was the thing the enemy was holding on to to cause her daughter to be bitter towards her and to dishonor her. So, of course, the Lord gave her a word and he's settling that. You know, I encourage her to forgive herself for what she said because none of us are perfect. But he's showing me how many daughters have turned against their mothers because their mothers weren't perfect. I know for me, as I thought of this, and I was thinking about it this morning, I thought, I have never said anything dishonoring about my mother. My mom is in heaven. She's enjoying her eternal crown. I've never spoken of anything negative. But I realized that doesn't mean that there wasn't some bad things that happened. But my perspective, the way I think is, I just see the good in my mother. And I have nothing but grace towards my mother. Because we went through some stuff. I went through some stuff in my childhood. And there was something that I had, well, I'll just be authentic with it. When I had first uh, reached out to her to tell her that I uh, was molested by the man down the street on the corner. She didn't say anything. I clearly remember we were where we were sitting and everything. And I shared that with her and she didn't say anything to me. But later she came back to me after she had said something to one of my older siblings who apparently that sibling told my mother that she didn't believe me and that she felt I was lying. And then my mother came back to me and said, I told so-and-so what you said about him and she said she thinks you're lying and not telling the truth. I did not say anything else for, well, I was about 21, and I remember um, having a few too many to drink, and I was sitting in my apartment with some friends, and I shared it with them. So that was only the, uh, the second time that I ever confided to anybody about being violated as a child. So my own mother, like when I needed her, when I was trying to heal from that trauma, unfortunately, she wasn't, she didn't step up. Like now looking back, like I, I acknowledge, yeah, she didn't step up when I needed her. But I have not, that has not been something that I lived with throughout my life, even when she was living. I didn't go around thinking, well, she wasn't there. She denied me. It, that never occurred to me. I have nothing 
I had nothing and have nothing but love and honor in my heart towards my mother. So, but the Lord was showing me there are daughters who have had things happen in their lives and they are holding it against their mother. So be encouraged that the Lord is going to come into those places where the enemy is working. It is the works of the enemy. And again, he says, do not take it personal. Okay? Do not take it personal. Even if you messed up, even if you did or said something that was wrong and that hurt them, you can apologize, apologize to the Lord, apologize to them if you can. Certainly forgive yourself. But the Lord says, do not take it personal. This is the works of the enemy. God is a God of unity. So wherever there is division, that is the works of the enemy. Especially, and I'm going to say this, because sometimes God will separate you from people that the enemy sent into your life. But when it comes to your children, when it comes to our children, they are of God. Your relationship is of God. So God would not and will not, he does not bring separations between mothers and daughters, daughters and mothers, mothers and sons, sons and fathers, okay? That is not who he is. So he says it's the works of the enemy. I'm reminded as I'm speaking, Daniel 7, 25 through 27, I've said it so many times at the channel because the Holy Spirit is always saying it. He's, I'm hearing him again, that the enemy comes to wear the saints out to alter the season because he knows what time it is. He knows that the king of glory is coming back for his bride. So he's doing everything he can to bring separation, to bring division, to stir up bitterness and unforgiveness and dishonor in the lives of God's people because he is a holy God. And how can we walk together in heaven when we can't even walk in one accord on earth. I think people should really be thinking about this because he's not going to send mothers over yonder in one place in heaven and daughters in another place in heaven because they couldn't get along on earth. No, he is settling things here on earth. He's dealing with the oppression, the oppressor, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So again, he says, don't take it personal. And some of you who you notice a pattern in your bloodline that's generational. And the Lord says he's reversing the curse. And for those of you who your mothers, but you had um, a difficult relationship with your mother, I encourage you to forgive her. She wasn't perfect. No mother is perfect. Now I know that there are situations in which, and I, I, I don't understand it, but mothers who abandon their, their children. They abuse their children. They abuse their children physically, sexually, mentally, emotionally. There are cases in which, you know, and the Lord can restore every relationship. There are some relationships because of the level of abuse and so forth that could take a lot longer or because like that individual, perhaps, if, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I, since I'm talking to somebody, you're a mother, but your mother and you did not have a good relationship. And when you talk about her, that is what you talk about. You talk about all the negative that happened. You find it difficult to find anything good to say. Who am I talking to? Because I know he's talking to somebody. The enemy is working in that. She wasn't perfect. And if she's still living, God wants to bring about restoration. And that's either a restoration between the two of you because I'm just sensing somebody's like, well, you don't know what she did to me. Okay, well, maybe I don't, but he does. But he's requiring you to forgive. And when you forgive, then when you talk about them, it doesn't come out in pain. Or you just stop talking about them, period. My mom used to always say, if you don't have anything good to say, just don't say it. So again, there's a pattern, just sensing the Holy Spirit wanting me to encourage somebody to forgive her, to forgive your mother, okay? She's not God. She was created in his image, but we're all a work in progress, and she just wasn't perfect. 
and somebody needs to know because he's wanting you to know that what you went through with your mother, there was things that she went through. And it may not necessarily been that she went through with her mother, but there were things that she went through. And those things that she went through traumatized her. So you were given the traumatized portion because she never healed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So if you find it difficult to forgive her, ask God to give you his eyes to see her. So you can see her through his eyes and therefore you can see a soul that was traumatized. And rather than be angry towards her, you can have compassion for her that she herself was so wounded and was never healed. Because some of you, your um, earthly mothers have gone on to be with the Lord. So there can't be an earthly restoration there. But there could be that restoration in your soul as you find that forgiveness and as you come to peace and understanding that it wasn't because your mother disliked you. It wasn't because she hated you. What my mom, like that situation in which she wasn't unfortunately able to connect with me and be what I was hoping and what I needed her to be in that moment, I don't hold that against her. I knew a lot about my mom at that point when I had even shared with her about what I'd gone through. I knew of her own sexual abuse when she was young and being raped on the back of a school bus by her uncle at the age of 16. Being physically and emotionally abused by her own father who was an alcoholic and living with a mother who was silent herself. So I lived and I saw that version of that mother who she too struggled to heal and she too was silent. But to this day, when I think of her and some of you that are over on my Facebook, I acknowledge my mother as a woman of God and I thank God that she got up on that rock. She discovered there was a better way and she pointed us the right way. And she demonstrated to us how to live that way. I have older siblings that saw also a different version of my mother before I came along. Because by the time I came along, the Lord had really done a deeper work in her. So y'all know when the Lord does a deep work in us, we change. We're transformed, right? We got to give people grace to be transformed. We're all just a work in progress. So she was transformed, thank God. So I had a different version of my mother than what some of my older siblings had and I have some older siblings that are healing they're in need of healing because of some things they went through with my mother but even knowing those things I don't hold that against my mother even the things that I went through with my mother I don't hold those against her like she used to I um, mean this is the first time I've ever like literally in my whole life I've ever even shared anything like this with my mom but I know that he's wanting me to be authentic. Because when you know me, you know I have nothing but love and honor towards my mom. But when I was younger, I remember my mom crying all the time out to the Lord for him to take her. Because she wanted to go. I did not understand that as a young girl. Like, why, why would she not love me enough to want to stay with me? So there were things that did affect me. And it affected me in a way that when I got became an adult... And the Lord began a deep work in me that I had to go back and I heal from. But again, I never have held that against her. When I think of her, I don't think about, well, yeah, you know, my mom didn't. She denied me. She didn't believe me when I told her that he was molesting me. You know? So ask God to give you eyes to see your mother. And ask God to give you eyes to see even your own children. Okay? Because... His presence in our lives helps us to work through some of the most difficult and painful situations with those that we love. He gives us a deeper understanding. He gives us a truth, and that truth sets us free. So I'm hoping some of you are getting some truth today that is setting you free, free from condemnation, free from shame, because 
you did something wrong, you weren't there perhaps whenever you should have been in their younger years, but hey, you came around, glory, hallelujah, nothing but grace here for you. The fact that you came around, that you gave your life to Christ, that you became a new creation in him, glory, hallelujah, nothing but forgiveness and grace here. But you need to forgive yourself. Even if they don't forgive you and they're holding things against you, you need to know that is the work of the enemy. Them holding on to something that you did either to them or something that you just did in your life that they didn't approve of, that had nothing to do with them. Again, the Lord says the enemy is working. It's the works of the enemy. Forgive yourself, forgive them, and pray and ask the Lord to help them to even see you through his eyes and to understand you through his eyes. I'm telling you, prayer works. There's power in prayer. And the Holy Spirit is the greatest counselor of all. And when you pray those things, he goes to work. Angels go to work. And I believe angels are working in this very hour. The Holy Spirit in this very hour is ministering to your child. Whether they are young, whether they are old, he's ministering to them. He is showing them that truly you do love them. He is revealing to them the works of the enemy. And many of them, it is from their own trauma that the enemy is able to work through to even attack you. So again, he says, do not take it personal. It is principalities that are operating and he is dealing with the enemy in this hour. Glory, hallelujah. So, okay, Jeremiah 31, verse 15. Thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitterness weeping, bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comfort, comforted for her children because they are no more. Thus says the Lord, restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord, and they will return from the land of the enemy. There is hope for your future, declares the Lord, and your children will return to their own territory. Glory, hallelujah. This is a promise that the Lord is making you today. A promise that he is going to fulfill in your life. It is not the will of God for you to be separated from your children. He's given me a word to release. It came and I was talking to a sister in Christ one day. Uh, she said something and it's just stuck. And he's given me a word, separation for restoration. Do not take this personal. And someone needs to know you need to just be still. He's saying Psalms 46.10, be still and know that he is God. He's saying Exodus 14.13 and 14, stand still and you will see the salvation of the Lord. And the enemies that you have been seeing, the enemies that have been attacking you and attacking your relationship with your child, with your daughter, with your son, with your children, you will see no more in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. So he is saying, dry your eyes. Do not take this personal. This is a principality thing and it is sent on an assignment. It's either been in an assignment in your bloodline for far too long and you are the one that he is using to break the curse. It stops with you. No more in Jesus name. Glory. Hallelujah. Some of you say, well, but wait a minute. I'm separated from my child. Okay, but the good news is he's going to bring restoration there. And then when they have children, their children will not know what it's like to be separated from their mother, from their father. Your daughter will not know what it's like to have a mother that is not present to have to be separated glory hallelujah so he's using you to reverse the curse so be strong oh faithful one be encouraged my sister in christ god sees you and he says do not weep anymore do not take this personal you will be rewarded all the tears that you have already cried, you're going to be rewarded. All the dishonor that you've had to face that they've brought against you with no cause at all, 
God says he is going to restore honor and he's going to reward you because you did not turn bitter. Even when they were bitter against you, you did not grow bitter against them. You have remained in a position of humility. Glory, hallelujah. And his promise is that they will return. They will return to you. His strong hand is going to bring them to you. He's going to deliver them back to you. He's going to deliver on his word to you. He's going to deliver on his promises to you. He says, do I bring to the point of birth and not deliver? He's going to deliver. It is birthing time. It is time for you to birth that restoration between you and your child, between you and your daughter, between you and your son. It is birthing time. So push. Just praise him until something happens. Glory. Hallelujah. Give him thanks because he's not a man that shall lie or change his mind. This is a word he's given to you. This is a word that he's decreeing over you. He's going to establish this word in your life. There is no demon in hell that can stop the plans and the promises of God in your life. There is no demon in hell that can keep your daughter from you, mama. There is no demon in hell that can keep your son from you, mama. God is going to bring them back to you and he's going to bring them back to you correctly. So again, he's saying Psalms 46.10 that he needs you to be still. He does not need you to go get in the way. Some of you try to manipulate things just try to get in contact with them just just to get that that moment of oh they still need you he said sit down and let him be god he's got this under control he doesn't want them to come back the way that they left just to bring you more dishonor he wants to bring them back to you this time correctly he wants to bring them back to you healed they need healing there has been trauma in their own lives you can't fix it only jehovah rapha can fix it only Jer Jehovah Rapha can heal it and the healer is going to heal them. He's going to fix them and he's going to fix this situation and then he's going to bring them back to you correctly so the two of you, glory, hallelujah, can go out two by two doing life together and living the abundant life that Christ died for y'all to live. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Now let's go over to Luke 15 because of time's sake, we're already at 30 minutes. I'm not even going to uh, read it all, but it is in regard to the prodigal son. Many of you have heard it so many times that you're like, oh, I've heard that before. Well, go hear it again. Hear what the Holy Spirit is wanting to speak to you. It's uh, 15, 11 through uh, 32. But let me find in here where um, he was definitely highlighting it earlier. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. I'm going to start in verse 16. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating, and no one was giving anything to him. This is a prodigal that was at his wit's end, lost everything. Oh, my goodness. He, he walked away from his father's house. He thought he had it better off over yonder without him. He thought he didn't need his father. But guess what? Right here, we see where the Lord brought him to a place to remember that he had it better off over there with his father, to remember that he had a father. And then we see in verse 17, and I love it because 17 means victory, but when he came to his senses. He said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread, but I am dying here with hunger. Glory, hallelujah. See, the Holy Spirit is showing me in this verse in which I am seeing victory. Because many of you, you know that a victory is coming, but you haven't seen it yet. The victory has already began. The Lord has brought the victory. The victory was right here in the pig pen when he was dealing with the prodigal son, in which the prodigal son, came to his senses. Glory. Hallelujah. So breakthrough. I'm feeling breakthrough. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. He is dealing with the hearts of the ones that have become hardened towards you. He is dealing with them and they are coming to their senses. So breakthrough is happening. Victory is here. Glory. Hallelujah. And you're going to see a greater manifestation of it. Just like this son, this father did. Glory. Hallelujah. He's showing me you, mama. I'm telling you, they are coming back to you. And when you read this story, 
story of the prodigal father, you will see that the father, the father, ne not the prodigal father, but the father of the prodigal son, you will see where the father never went after his son. He never did anything. He stayed. He remained. He was still and he allowed God to be God. And God brought salvation to his household. Glory. Hallelujah. Verse 18. I will get up and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I can go on and on. Please go and read it all. The Lord is saying he is going to remove that heart of stone that they have and give them a heart of flesh. He's going to put within them the desire and the ability to, to know him, to know his ways and to follow his ways and to live according to his ways. And his ways is for them to honor you. Glory, hallelujah. So they're going to come back. They're going to come back being remorseful, being repentant, asking you to forgive them for dishonoring you when you were needing them the most. He's going to bring them back healed. He's going to bring them back correctly. And he's going to restore y'all's relationship. And it's going to be far greater than what it ever Ever was before. Glory, hallelujah. Family, be encouraged by this word from the Lord. Continue to stand firm in your faith, and I will talk to you all soon. Shalom.